Yeah, maybe I can start. Okay, all right. Uh, so let's get started. So there are two talks in the afternoon. So this next, uh, in this talk, I will talk about the uh, spectral expansion, and in the next talk, we'll talk about the uh, the invariant trace formula, mainly for SL2 and other things. So okay, so this is lecture four. Spectral expansion. So this is analogous to the geometric expansion, but in some sense it is uh, more uh, uh, more difficult than the geometric expansion. So we are looking for uh, uh, something like a kT of xf is a uh, sum over chi in x, kT chi xf, and this is this is something related to the spectrum of g. So we will define this more precisely. And uh, so, so the, I need to get, have some background. There are there are many in some sense there are many pre, more prerequisites for the uh, spectral side than the geometric side, and I, I have to do Langlands decomposition. At least I have to state these. There are many things that I have to state in order to uh, give the statement of this uh, coarse expansion, and after that define expansion. So, so first thing is, uh, if you have a group G A, and you write it as through the uh, G A one times A G, and it, this is through the H G map, and then if you want a representation of G A, then you can think of this as a representation of G A one, and a representation of this uh, really group. So, in particular, so A G is nothing but uh, A G R, a connected component of that. And you can identify AG with the uh, vector space AG through the HG map. So if you want, uh, so what I'm saying is representation of GA. You can think of this as uh, representation of GA1 and tensored with uh, AGC star. So this is the dual to AGC, and you can think of uh, representations here as characters here, the dual group of this, uh, this, is the dual, this is the complexified dual group of this one. So in particular, if you have a lambda in A, G, C star, and then define this uh, R, G, this or discrete lambda is R, G, discrete. So let me write an X here of x uh, times uh, e to the lambda inner product with hgx. So this is the representation. And uh, rg disk is the restriction of, is the restriction of ga, the representation, to the discrete spectrum. So L2 disk here. Yeah. And uh, this representation is unitary, if and only if this is purely imaginary. So unitary, uh, so lambda has to belong to the imaginary part. This. Okay, and the same game you can play with any parabolic subgroup. So if you have a standard, if you have a, not, not necessarily standard, so if for P a parabolic subgroup, and uh, lambda in A, P, C star, you can do the same thing. And define I, P of lambda Y to be the representation induced from the par parabolic all the way to G of this R M P, the Levy subgroup of P, this lambda, and trivial on the unipotent part. So this is the induced representation. And thus, uh, I will write the space for this representation. This is very standard stuff. 
So the space of this so which HP is a set of functions phi you know G A modulo this M P A M P Q A P So the conditions are that norm phi square which is integral over k and mpa uh, phi mk d m b k. So this has to be finite. And the second condition is that uh, for almost all x in G A, the function phi x has to be in L2 disk M P Q or M P A 1. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mod and square. Yeah, sure. Thanks. And here phi x of m is phi of mx. So this is the space of the representation. And the way the group G A, this, this is induced all the way to G. So the, the action of the group is uh, given by the following. So IP lambda phi phi. This is the vector which when evaluated an element x is phi of x y. But then I have to take care of this lambda and this HP is independent of lambda. So what I'm, I'm the shift, there, there is some shift here. So the shift term is this, lambda plus rho P, HP, X, Y. HP, X. So this is, this is just a shift so that we can define this space HP independent of lambda. Okay, so you're just moving somewhere and then coming back. This is not so serious. And the space uh, HP zero, you define this as the K finite vectors in HP. Okay, so it is for, for our group SL2, this uh, HP is uh, quite explicit, so let me just write that for G is SL2. Uh, you have the first is HG, when P is, there are two possibilities for P. P is either P0 or G. So if P is equal to G, then this space HG is nothing but uh, the L2 discrete space. And in the second case, if you have a p equal to p naught, then you observe that uh, this quotient m m zero a one mod m zero q is nothing but uh, looks like this. It's t t inverse. T is in i ideal uh, modulo q and norm t is 1. So this is isomorphic to uh, the norm 1 ideals up to this. This is compact. And uh, so if you have a function in this space hp, if uh, phi belongs to hp, hp is 0, then phi is square integrable function. You can think of phi is as a square integral function. on uh, this compact set k infinity is uh, SO2R. So uh, 
yeah, so this is the explicit uh, HF space of functions. And now let me talk about the Langlands decomposition and what it tells for SL2. So the Langlands decomposition. is in terms of those the while sets. So if you have two parabolics, P and P prime parabolic subgroups, then you define the while sets. We already defined them in the uh, yesterday's lecture. So the W A P, A P prime, this is the set of uh, linear maps, linear isomorphisms from A P to A P prime obtained by restricting the while group elements here. So <coughs> from A naught to AP. So we have already seen this. Okay. So, uh, uh, so in, in our case of SL2, you have uh, the, yeah, one more thing. So denote by P the set of associated parabolic subgroups where P and P prime are associated. If uh, the the while set is non-empty, and so in the case of so so uh, in the case of SL two, you will have uh, two two associated parabolic two classes of associated parabolic subgroups, and the Langlands decomposition is uh, based on this. That is. Uh, let me write what that is. So Langlands, the, uh, it says the the the, decom the spectral decomposition is if you have the L two space is a direct sum over the P of L two P G Q G A, and I'm just writing it very briefly, but. Uh, you, 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 can, you can get to know what this LP is. And in the case of SL2, we can see this as, uh, so for SL2, so P is either the class of P0 or the class of G, because uh, W of A0, A0 is just a W, which is one and the long element, and W, a G A G is the identity because A G is just zero, so there's only one map between the vector space zero. Uh, so uh, the Langlands decomposition, if I write like this, then there are two terms. So the co term corresponding to P equal to G is the discrete spectrum. And the term corresponding to P equals P zero or equivalence class is the continuous spectrum. Now the discrete spectrum contains the cuspidal spectrum and also the, the residual spectrum. And in this case, uh, it's just a trivial representation. So, so this is cuspidal and direct sum the trivial representation. That is the, that's only, uh, because determinant is one, so there are not many uh, residual spectra. Uh, so yeah, so now using this decomposition, I will uh, decompose the kernel in the following manner. Yeah, so I have to define the Eisenstein series now.
So if you have a x in G A, choose a vector C in H P and a lambda in A M C star where P is M N. Then you define the Eisenstein series as E X C lambda a sum over PQ GQ mod PQ of uh, phi of delta x this is this is the eisenstein series and uh, now you can choose a basis of uh, hp inside the dense subspace of k finite vectors and then it follows from langlands decomposition <laughs> that the kernel kg which is k x y defined to be a, a sum over delta in g q x inverse gamma let me write gamma gamma y has the expansion in terms of this basis and uh, uh, in terms of Eisenstein series has the decomposition so kxy is a sum over p and p inverse i will define what that is i a p star This the inner product with e y y lambda t lambda. So this is the first step. We know this. This is the definition of the kernel, and this you can expand this in terms of a basis of H P uh, as a in, as an inner product of two Eisenstein series. And when I I will have such a similar expression for uh, K P, uh, and then when I plug that into the K T. That will give me one. That will give me the decomposition spectral decomposition to begin with. That is not the coarse spectral decomposition. I will refine it further and get the coarse spectral decomposition. Then I will refine for every uh, uh, cuspidal datum that I will define. I will have a finer expansion for that. So here, uh, yeah. So the NP is the number of elements in the. Uh, it's the sum of this. It's a finite set, nothing serious. So P is associated to P prime. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is, and then you have such a similar formula for instead of this is KG, you will have something similar for KP. So let me replace uh, uh, more. Let me write that formula. You have the same thing k q x y is uh, n q a m q q This, this is the actual formula for the kernel, and you, this, this equals, again, a something similar to, to this, which I will write. So now think of everything as happening inside MQ. So you have to intersect with MQ, all the parabolic subgroups.
So this equals sum over p inside q and pq inverse and then i a p star the basis of uh, the truncated the non of the Eisenstein series so everywhere i'm writing q and the q will be uh, is defined very similarly so y phi lambda d lambda and the, the definition is somewhat similar you can guess what that is n q p is n p intersect m q and the e p the eisenstein series is also defined similarly instead of summing over g q mod p q i will now sum over q q mod p q phi delta x e to the, the same thing as before and then I can plug this in the definition of KTXF which is a sum over standard parabolics I have something here and then sum over delta of KP delta X delta X tau P hat of the same thing as before now I can plug in this expression and let me write Q instead of P so that it will just agree so Q Q, Q, and then this, I, I can I can plug this in here. Okay, so this gives me one expansion. All right. So now, uh, I the the coarse geometric expansion is something uh, coarser than this. I will explain very soon what that is. So. So the plan is uh, the same as we in the geometric side. So first we define the coarse geometric expansion. Then for some classes, we'll give a more explicit formula for those classes. And then uh, using that formula, we will go ahead and uh, define a finer expansion for all the classes, not just those classes. So here's a definition. The function is called cuspidal if its constant term is zero. If p not equal to g, uh, you have this integral function p, p n x t m is zero, where uh, the integral is over n p a. And uh, you have the theorem that the cuspidal spectrum is contained in the discrete spectrum. This is a theorem of Gelfand and P s. I need to define the cuspidal automorphic data. So I need, I'm defining the cuspidal representations. So this says that L2 cusp uh, GA mod GQ, which is just the uh, cuspidal functions inside the discrete spectrum, uh, inside the L2 space, is contained actually in the discrete spectrum. And in particular, the multiplicity is finite. Okay, so now, now uh, if you know this, then we can uh, decompose the cuspidal spectrum. You can write this as L2 cusp as a direct sum over all representation sigma L2 cusp sigma, where this L2 cusp sigma is finitely many copies of sigma. And finally, now I can define the cuspidal automorphic datum as the following.
a cuspidal automorphic datum is an equivalence class of pairs just as before. P comma alpha, or let me write sigma, P comma sigma. Where P is a standard parabolic and uh, sigma is a cuspidal automorphic representation inside MA mod MQ. Sigma is an irreducible representation of M A mod M Q such that uh, it appears in the cuspidal spectrum, which means that L2 cusp sigma of the same thing is not zero. And the equivalence relation is that P comma sigma is equivalent to P prime comma sigma prime. If there is a while set element that takes sigma prime to sigma. So if and only if there exists an W, AP, AP prime, such that uh, sigma prime W, which takes M to sigma prime of W, M, W inverse, is equivalent to sigma. Okay, so this is an equivalence relation and uh, the, the classes are called as cuspidal automorphic data. Now let us see what this for SL2. So in the case of SL2, uh, no, one more thing, let me just, uh, let X, as XG, denote the cuspidal automorphic data. Okay, so now let us see what this, these classes are for SL2. So if P equal to G, uh, if P is G, then uh, sigma is an irreducible representation of GA1 mod GQ such that the L2 cusp space is non-zero, which just means that sigma is a cuspidal automorphic representation. Of SL2. And if P is P0, then uh, you want sigma to be a representation of M, M0 A1 mod M0 Q. Now what is M0 A1 mod M0 Q? It's the compact group we saw earlier. So uh, then in this case, sigma is just a representation of this and everything up here. So, so this is compact. So there's cuspidal spectrum, discrete spectrum, every, compact and abelian also. So cuspidal spectrum is the same as discrete spectrum is the same as full spectrum. And so uh, sigma is just a, a Heka character here. So you can think of sigma as a character of this compact group. It's just a Heka character. And uh, what is the equivalence? Uh, okay. So if you have G here, then this is forced to be G. So G sigma is equivalent to G G, prime, G sigma prime, then uh, you need an element here, but then AG, AG prime, AG, AG is just uh, identity element here. So, so an identity definitely takes sigma to itself. So sigma is in, G comma sigma is in its own conjugacy class. And what about the other one here? In this case, P0, if, you, if I look at AP0, AP0, then there are two elements here, the full wild group. 
And so it has to be uh, invariant, a sigma. If you apply the long, long while element, then it does nothing because it's abelian. So every Heka character is in its own class. Okay, are you following? Uh, so what I'm saying is P comma P, P0 sigma is equivalent to P0 sigma prime, then sigma equal to sigma prime because it is abelian. M0 is abelian, so there's not much to do here. Okay, uh, and the multiplicity also here is one. Here, uh, it is one. It's not obvious. It's a theorem of Ramakrishna that for SL2 uh, multiplicity one is true, and uh, in this case, it is just the character. So multiplicity is one by like Peter Weil or something. So, so this is the case with SL2. Now, uh, I will define the. Uh, I want to define the the k chi and then sum over chi in x because this this we just define this and then we, I want to define k as this so I, I must first define what this k chi is which is which is what I will do now. So the spectral decomposition theorem of Langlands gives uh, more information that uh, there is, uh, the spectrum is L2 GA mod GQ is a direct sum over cuspidal automorphic data of L2 chi GA mod GQ. And uh, I, I won't define what this L2 chi is. It's somewhat involved. Uh, but for, for chi in this x, well, the, define the subspace HP chi is the subspace of phi in HP. such that phi x is an L2 disk chi mpq mpa1 where phi x of m is phi of mx. So I define this subspace and then I will say that I can choose a basis of this subspace I can choose this basis inside this HP chi. So there will be a disjoint union. That's what I want to say. But before that, I want to define this map from XMP to XG. So these are classes in MP. These are classes in G, those cuspidal automorphic data. And uh, if I have a parabolic, so elements here look like P comma sigma, where P is a parabolic subgroup of MP. Now, if you have a parabolic subgroup of MP, inside MP, you can think of it as a parabolic subgroup of G cut out with MP. So what I'm saying is uh, a cuspidal datum here will look like P1 intersect MP comma sigma, and then you map it to P1 comma sigma. So this gives a map from here to here, with which I can identify the following L2 spaces. So L2 disk chi it's a direct sum of those chi p which map to chi under this map of L2 chi p uh, L2 disk chi p. MPQ mod MPA1. So 
So I collect those terms here. I mean, I, you will see why I'm doing this. And then define, so, so L2 disk chi is nothing but L2 disk intersect with L2 chi. And then I, I, I can write this HP as a direct sum over HP comma chi over chi. And uh, similarly, HP zero, the K finite vectors is a direct sum HP zero chi, chi here. And uh, I can do this. I can write the basis BP as a disjoint union over chi, BP comma chi, where BP comma chi is nothing but BP intersect with HP chi zero. So the, the, what the contention here is that I can choose elements of the basis nicely so that they, they align with the, the, the decomposition of according to chi. Okay, this is what it says. So if you have this decomposition, I can choose the basis inside, the, uh, inside these respectively, okay? So, and this I need because now I can make a finer version of this, uh, which is the coarse geometric, a coarse spectral expansion. So now you define k chi of x, y as uh, the sum over p and p inverse i a p star. Now this phi is in b p chi of the same inner e of something, e of something bar d lambda. And the uh, k chi is the restriction of RF to the invariant subspace L2 chi. This. So if, if I do this, then I have that k x y is a sum over chi in chi x k chi x y, and the same thing holds for k p, which I will just write very briefly. K p x y is also a sum chi in chi k p comma chi x y, and. Finally, I can write the KT as a, uh, as a decomposition over cuspidal automorphic data. So KT chi is uh, sum over P minus one to the something, sum over delta. K P comma chi and K T of X F now now it's the decomposition over chi in X K T chi X F so so I have this decomposition. I want, now the next step is to show that if you integrate over x first and then take the sum over chi, then you get absolutely convergent series. So, but but uh, that is not so obvious. And for, for proving that, Arthur introduces, I mean, probably it's uh, Langlands who introduced that. He introduces the, the truncation operator and using the truncation operator, uh, uh, he shows that if you integrate this, you get uh, fine. So this, this sum is, uh, if you have something similar, JT of F, chi in X, say, play the same game, JT chi of F, then these, all these converge absolutely and the sum 
when you take it, it's still finite. So absolute convergence, this, uh, you need some, uh, some, some new techniques for this. And uh, you need the truncation operator. I, 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 it's, it's important, but I don't have time to discuss this. So I will just write the definition of truncation operator. So lambda t phi evaluated at x is a sum over phi, sum over delta, integral phi of n delta x, tau phi hat, h p of n delta, delta x, minus t dn. So this is the definition of truncation operator. And the whole, in, in the cusp, uh, spectral uh, side of the trace formula, it, it comes down to evaluating the inner product of two truncated Eisenstein series. So I, I won't talk about that, but uh, yeah. So having defined this, uh, and uh, using this to prove the absolute convergence here, then Arthur shows that the two former properties we have been seeing hold for these j chi distributions, namely that they are polynomials in T, so you can define them on uh, everywhere in A0. And the second property is the invariance property. So they are more like formal properties. So uh, the first is that T going to J T chi is a polynomial in T. And the second one is that uh, you have the invariance formula j chi of f y as a sum over q of j m q f q y. And this, this holds. And again, uh, if you, you have this map x m q to x q, x g. And uh, when chi is cuspid, I, I, I haven't defined cuspidal, but uh, for some classes, when there is no image here, then you get the, the terms corresponding to uh, Q equal to G are invariant, invariant distributions. So they are, they are in some sense good. Uh, yeah, so for SL2, uh, this, uh, this decomposition is, there are two types of chi's in, in SL2, namely one coming from cuspidal automorphic representation and other coming from Heka characters. So roughly you can think of uh, this expansion J of F as a sum over J chi of F, where uh, this is cuspidal automorphic representations, and plus the contribution of something like Heka characters, J chi of F. Okay, uh, now as, as in the geometric side, for some chi's, uh, for some chi, special chi's, Arthur gives a more explicit formula for this J chi f, and then later, for every chi, he does that. So the first step is to define this for, the, for define what the, uh, he calls it unramified, but it might be better to call it uh, regular, maybe. So let me define what he calls unramified uh, classes. And the condition is very same, that the stabilizer is identity. Uh, so, so definition, a class chi. is unramified if uh, for every p comma sigma in chi the stabilizer of sigma in w a p a p is one and so uh, so if you look at the the SL2 case, what, what, what happens in the SL2 case? So if you can have chi corresponding to 
g comma sigma then a g a w a g a g is anyways one because a g is the zero vector space so this is one which means any it is always unramified and if you look at uh, so this is p equal to g and if you look at p equals p zero then it is never unramified because w of a zero we saw this just now is the full group w and because mp is abelian so uh, the the long while group element will do nothing and so it is uh, the stabilizer is more bigger so so this is not not unramified and this is unramified now for for unramified classes arthur gives the following explicit expression a more explicit expression uh, so let me write this expression so this is theorem suppose sky is unramified and chi equals p comma pi then sorry what what is the even for sl2 what what, what? uh it's a character of the m not so m not is abelian right so how will the while group do anything to uh, ah. so the action is uh, the stabilizer of sigma so this acts on sigma right so w acts on sigma by conjugation but but sigma is abelian no so Uh, I see, I see, I see, okay, I see, so, uh, yeah, 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 oh, I see, so not all are unramified, uh, the ones that are invariant under, are under the flipping, so, uh, if you have sigma is the character, sigma of x, is sigma of x inverse for all x if this is if this is this holds uh, it is a quadratic character then it is unramified or not unramified ramified yeah 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 not unramified okay so the other ones if it is not a quadratic character then it is ramified okay thanks hmm Okay, uh, so now here, for, for unramified cuspidal data, Arthur says that, uh, Arthur shows that J chi f has the following expression. The multiplicity of pi, which for SL2 is one, integral i a p star, M P I lambda. I haven't told you what this is. I P I lambda F T lambda. So here uh, M P comes from intertwining operators. I haven't uh, defined that, but the big theorem of Langlands is that intertwining operators uh, in some some cone 
they are uh, absolutely convergent and they have meromorphic continuation to the entire uh, complex plane uh, in, in terms of the parameter lambda. So, uh, so there is a, so they form a GM family of intertwining operators. And once you have a GM family, you get a smooth function. So this is a smooth, MP pi lambda is a smooth function in lambda corresponding to the GM family defined by the intertwining operators. So lots of things are happening here, okay? Firstly, I'm saying that intertwining operators converge in some, so if you have uh, in A naught for SL2, then if you have a pi one, which is half the sum of positive roots, then if real part greater than this, the intertwining operators are gonna converge. And then they have meromorphic continuation to the full uh, complex plane, okay? And uh, th th from that, you, you define uh, a GM family of intertwining operators in terms of the parameter lambda, and they have to agree on some walls or some, there is some condition. And from there, from that GM family, you get a smooth function, which is this, this function, okay? So, I haven't defined the uh, intertwining operators. So, let, let us, uh, uh, actually, let us do something for, for SL2. So in the case of SL, so, uh, you can think of these as logarithmic derivatives of intertwining operators. Uh, I don't know if I have told anything more, but so if G is SL2, then, uh, then this term is one here. And so suppose chi is cuspidal and of the form uh, G comma sigma. And sigma is a cuspidal automorphic representation. Then this M, MG is, is identity and uh, IP, IP of pi lambda F. So P is G, so this is just, just the representation pi lambda and lambda is only zero because AG is zero. So this is just pi. And uh, in this case you have J chi of F is the multiplicity is one, so it's just a trace of pi of f. You 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 recover what you uh, expected, so this is the trace. And uh, so let me uh, define the. Int so I I have uh, now my plan is to give the fine spectral expansion, or at least just write the fine spectral expansion, and then see it for SL2 only. See, see everything for SL2, okay? So uh, let me define the intertwining operators. So intertwining operators. So th this is a map from M Q P uh, of S pi lambda from the uh, space H P to H Q Q one by uh, M. Q, P, S, Phi lambda, evaluated at Phi, evaluated at X. This is the integral Phi of WS inverse NX. And then you have to land in the correct space. So there is a lambda plus Q, P, H, P of
So if you look at the, uh, the, the definition of this operator in the notes of Arthur, there is a mistake. So this S is negative sign is inside, but it should be outside because it, it has to cancel out when you take the correct P and, when you take P and Q and same and S is identity, they better cancel. So uh, there's, a, there's a small typo there. Uh, so the integral is taken over NQA mod NQA intersect WS inverse NPA WS. No, it's the other way around, the inverse is here. And then uh, for, for SL2, you, you, you explicitly write down what this, these, these look like. So suppose you, uh, SL2, you have uh, P and Q are either P0 or P0 bar, otherwise there's not much if it's G. So, and say then S is an element of W, A0, A0, which is just a full Y group. So if you have P equals P0 and Q is also P0, and say S is equal to identity, then the M S lambda phi is just phi. Uh, so I'm just writing some examples. And and uh, suppose you have uh, P and Q to be P naught, but then S is the <laughs> the long while group element, then the MS, this intertwining operator looks like this. So the point is you can compute them explicitly, and uh, th these are some formulas. And uh, they, they can, they, I just I mentioned this, but let me write it. So they converge. In uh, row zero plus a zero uh, star c. Uh, the, the positive Y chamber shifted with rho zero. So in the case of SL2, you have that uh, lambda is in A zero C star, such that real part of lambda has to be greater than rho zero. Then, then the, the operators converge, and they have meromorphic continuation. So finally, the term MP pi lambda is the smooth function corresponding to the GM family GM0 family so M Q P S uh, lambda inverse M Q P lambda plus lambda so so this this is a GM family which is indexed by uh, lambda in I A naught star and whenever uh, P and Q share a common wall then this function agrees with the other functions so in this case you get a smooth function and evaluated at S, uh, this capital lambda equal to zero gives you that operator there. And you can express this in terms of uh, derivatives of intertwining uh, operator, uh, logarithmic derivatives. So this, so this is the coarse expansion, I, I mean, for, uh, for the unramified classes. Now I will define the fine spectral expansion and just calculate those terms explicitly for SL2. But uh, I will maybe continue uh, in the next 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 talk. <laughs>